release of Splatoon 3 that came out about a few weeks ago, there has been memes going all over the internet. No, seriously, the memes are actually over rampant. I mean, seriously, look at these things. Like, it's a joke. Regardless, Splatoon 3 came out about a week ago, and I wanted to do a review and gameplay of it, and I just got my own ca capture card recently, which there's another video on. And honestly, I couldn't tell much about Splatfest, so that's what I thought it was. Anyways, so there will be some spoilers ahead for Area 1 and the tutorial area. Yeah, it sounds creepy. I'll explain it later. Alright, into the video. The game starts off how it usually does with character creation, usually being a squid, but this time there's now an octoling feature with the hair and, most importantly, the eyebrows. Heh, <laughs> like I forget that, seriously. Regardless, there's also chances for your little buddy, pants, and yeah, not much has really changed. Overall, though, the customization's pretty good this time around, so not much in there to add, but, you know, let's continue into the actual tutorial bit. Starting off the tutorial, we get the usual look around, follow the fry and whatnot, and unlike the last tutorials I played, this one just kind of fell a bit lackluster. Sure, the Eiffel Tower is upside down in the background, but this time we didn't get the bow, like the, you know, show-off demo. No, we get the fan favorite known as the Spire Shot Jr. Now, I'm not too mad. Overall, Spider-Shot Jr. is actually a great weapon for starter players. However, I'm not a starter player. I played Splatoon 2, which comes to my first main problem of Splatoon 3, which is they added something known as the Sheldon Ticket System. Now, usually this wouldn't be too bad, because I don't like spending coins on weaponry. However, there is a problem to now, if you were a certain rank in Splatoon 2, you immediately get any weapon rank of choice with three gold tickets, which means you can buy level 50 weapons at level 1. Like the overpowered Splatana, that's a chainsaw. Yes, I'm bringing this up because it's really annoying to have to get used to the new gameplay, and the fact that I haven't re-rolled any of my clothing yet, because everyone's clothing is reset. Now, that usually wouldn't be a bad thing, but I'm going against players who use the amiibo costumes, so until the three-week passes where I get enough, you know, high-level gear, I'm getting splat attacked left and right, making it hard to really grind out the game. That's just my main problem with multiplayer, though. Now, on to story mode. Starting from the intro screen of Splatoon 3, we get to meet our new Musecast Media group. Known as Deep Cut. On the left we have Shiver, the Medium Fry, and the right Big Man, Best Boy. Anyways, so they go through our news like usual. We can't skip these into the first one, but um... Wait, no breaking news? I thought there was supposed to be something about Zapfish. Oh, there it is. Once again, the Zapfish, the Great Zapfish, I mean, has been stolen. Okay, this is kind of getting out of hand. How the hell are we able to steal a giant fish more than quadruple the size of the Eiffel Tower, and no one can see that? Okay, I'm thinking a bit too much. Time to go to story mode. While we're waiting for the loading screen, did you know that Splatoon 3 is actually one of the most bought games by Nintendo this year? Huh, it's pretty awesome. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Excuse me, I'm an Octarian. What the hell, Gramps? So, if you couldn't tell by now, or you're just a Splatoon 1 or Splatoon 2 player, this is Captain Cuttlefish, the original leader of Splatoon Squad. Now, this guy just basically is here to explain everything that's currently happening, such as Grapefish being stolen, yada yada. He's basically a tutorial master. Pretty basic, whatever. Also, look at the great fish in that image. <laughs> Such a cute boy. Anyways, back to the thing. So, yeah, Cuttlefish isn't really smart, as you can tell, because I'm an Octoling and he doesn't seem to care. Oh, that's also right. He assumes the fact that we're going to join him in a death life situation to save a giant zapfish that apparently none of our people can keep safe. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much the Splatoon plot of every single game so far. So I'm not too surprised that um, we're doing it again. Okay, can someone actually explain to me how we keep stealing a giant zapfish that's more than 8 to 16 times the size of a single Octoling or whatnot? Like, Octavio actually had a mech. I don't know what the heck these guys are doing to steal it, seriously. 
never mind. Maybe it's the sound noise that are causing it. Okay. Regardless, so the tutorial level. This is basically what tutorial world is. It's just Octave Canyon again, but a lot more dusty. <laughs> Okay, enough messing around. Now we're gonna get to the main. Ooh, what's this? Oh, that's right. So if you didn't like the original Agent 3 or you didn't have the Deep Sea Metro DLC, just come to this chair right here and you'll be able to edit how Agent 3 looks. Yes, I'm being dead serious. You can change how Agent 3 looks. So you can choose the fact that they're. Oh. Never mind, you can only choose if they're male or female. You can't choose the fact that they're Octarian. Well, okay. Continuing through the game. <laughs> what? what am I, Crazy Mike or something? I have never seen that. What is this? <laughs> I look like some fried tofu or kiwi that just came out wrong. What is this? Okay, um, maybe if I shoot it? No? Um, what if I throw bombs at it? Maybe. Just, uh, I only have little buddy to throw. I can't throw bombs, it seems. Yeah. Okay, um, I'll get back to you on that. So, how the overworld works. Essentially, once you get enough uh, eggs, instead of having to spend it on upgrades or new weaponry, what you will do now is you'll get your little buddy and throw it at these giant fluff egg things. And it'll clear away the ooze so you don't have to run into it by accident. And to get these eggs, you have to go through story mode, like usual. So, you know, all the basic missions. Now, like I said, this is a tutorial world, so everything in here is super basic. I could beat it in probably a minute fly, honestly. But, not too big a deal. Honestly, I want to skip to our boss that we have to talk about. And right on cue. As he falls in. Inkling boys and girls, put your hands together for the one and only. DJ Octavio. Yes, I teased it in the intro, but I find it very interesting that our first boss we fight is our long-lost rival. Well, technically, he keeps changing, considering the fact that Art we changed, so it's the first time he sees us, actually. Is DJ Octavio, as per usual. But, I like his new Tetherop skin set he's going for, rather than the traditional military helmet he wears. Really fits the new era. Oh, that's right, I still have to kick your ass, don't I? Well, unlike the previous games where we had Callie or Marie just come in and, well, brainwashing Callie, shooting bombs at us, or Marie coming in to save the day, giving us either the Rainmaker or a sing-along, today is just simply us battling a giant Octavio mech that has legs! Wow, why do I feel like it's so much weirder than it should be? Well, regardless, the boss fight's pretty easy, you just kind of shoot his hands as they come by and whatnot, and that's just the first wave. Second wave gets a bit more interesting. Okay, interesting was the understatement. This just feels like another Japanese machine that you'd randomly find being sold at a kiosk. Regardless, the new ability he has is for the vacuum suck, a new item that is going to be in multiplayer mode. But they decided to tease it to new players in the game by simply having it be the first thing you fight because you don't know how to counter it properly. And until you do know how, you just basically kind of dodge every attack that's so far known to human mankind. Yeah. It's like that until the game kind of gets fed up with your shenanigans of not knowing what to do because they realize, oh my god, you're kind of a new player. So instead, Callfish will simply tell you, yeet your little buddy into the vacuum. But, but he's gonna die! No, nope, he has plot armor, don't worry, he'll be perfectly fine. And because of this plot armor that he has, and repetitive you throwing him into the nozzle while we wait, the battle gets pretty much the same easiness of it's just DJ Octavia shooting hands at you, nothing too new. Until his third phase comes along. This is where I had some problems. Personally. In his third wave, you can see that he unleashes a giant wave of purple wave. Now at first, this doesn't seem too bad. But then you realize, it damages the armor. 
So, if you shot one of these, and with the vacuum waving, so you can't shoot the hand to, to stop it, well, essentially, you get left with no armor like I just have displayed. And when you try and recover it and get out of the way, well, it gets kind of annoying. Like I said, not as hard as it should be. Honestly, it's very easy, and I'm just an idiot because it took me a while to kill him. But when I did, oh boy, was I not disappointed. Target acquired. Tactical nuke incoming! I just love this shot of Octavio just sitting outside his mech. It is so different from what I'm used to, just him being blown up to smithereens and in ink. It is so different. It's amazing. The animation fits him well for being defeated, but still not unrelenting. It's more than amazing. <laughs> Oh, did you think the video was over? No, in fact, this is the best transition I think I've ever seen into a video game. Obviously, there's Skyrim and stuff, but I think this is one of the better ones overall. Okay, so I may have overhyped for the intro, but look, man, the game overall is a great game. But let's get you with the story, shall we? The game then introduced us to our main original cast, being Mo Callie Marie, Callie being the sister who's brainwashed, Marie being the traditional sister who runs the Squid Big Satoon, and oh my god, it's Agent 3. Wait, which Agent 3? The one for the Metro. Yes, he got upgraded now, he's no longer Agent 3. You are now Agent 3. Man, it's a confusing thing. Anyways, so this Agent 3 is from the one from the Metro. Now is a runner leading, uh, leading runner, runner. Okay, he's just the leader of Squid Bleak's platoon, okay? I don't think I have to say anything else about that. Ahem, <laughs> indeed, Marie. They explain the situation that you fall into an area underneath the Octo Canyon crater, and supposedly this is where mammalians have been coming from. However, they need more data research, but to do that, they need someone to go and explore. So instead of sending, you know, the trained heroine, or hero in my case, since I made him a male, they decide to send, send the random person they've met on the street who just fell down with their grandfather. Yeah, I really want someone to explain that one to me. Seriously. Uh, beside the fact that this is more like a Bioshock game where you fall in a wacky city and you start to explore countryside, I guess, in this typical term, there's mostly just islands that you have to go through, and every time you complete an island, I'm assuming there's a boss fight. Uh, I didn't get the boss fight for Chapter 1, or maybe I just have to go back and find it, but I didn't see it last time I went through. Regardless, now, the levels are a bit different compared to the Splatoon tutorial levels that they were showing, where you jumped in a tea kettle and whatnot. This time... It's a bit more familiar, and to those who've played the Deep Sea Metro DLC for Splatoon 2, I am so sorry. So, so far as you can see, unlike the original Splatoon level where you just jump in and start shooting or whatnot from the tea kettle, now we're going to be playing this a bit more like the Deep Sea Metro, where we will have to pay to do retries. That's right, if we fail the level, we supposedly will have to go to multiple other levels to retry. So, but luckily, there is a main difference in the map, where there are main levels, which are gold kettles, which means you won't have to pay for it, and then there are silver kettles, which you will have to pay some fish eggs to do, but get a high reward back if you complete it the first time. Sadly, you cannot grind out the same special levels. They won't let you do that. I tried. Trust me. Now, to keep this video short and probably under 20 minutes, I'm going to quickly speed through why I knew about the entirety of the first chapter. This is actually post-recording of playing the full game on stream, and the rest of this video earlier was just me screwing around when I first got it because I didn't have my capture card yet from the mail. So, I'll simply say it like this. The first levels, the gold levels, kettles, well, they're pretty easy. And actually, the first world doesn't have a boss. It's only the tutorial world. Yeah, that's... That's still pretty weird to me. Explain that one to me, Nintendo. Why Why skip a boss world? You know what? Forget it. I'm not going to question it. Anyways, 
So, the dual t kill worlds are really simple, just get to the end like usual. And unlike the old games where you had to look for Kraken Scrolls, or Fish Eggs, or other weird things like that, this game just wants you to get to the end without dying, usually. It, it's more just like the Deep Sea Metro, where you have to complete goals and that's it. I do have to admit, though, compared to the DC Metro and other things, this story mode was really easy and actually felt like a breeze doing and had a lot of fun playing it. Actually, I'm going to probably do a bit more recording on the other levels. That's a separate video. Anyways, back to the main thing. So to find Kraken Scrolls, you usually have to walk through the overworld and shoot these balloons or sometimes the little metal things, which I don't have because it wasn't in the first world. I said that's going to be a separate video, so I don't spoil, because this spoiler was only for the first world in the tutorial. Anything else will be out, and I will bring that up in the next Splatoon 3 video. Anyways, let's continue a bit further on, since I now am back and scroll, and I'm just going to speed through it. First, let's talk about the easiest mission known as What Caused Big Bang You. This is a game that requires you to use an E-Leader 4K, which, by the way, unscoped took me like 13 seconds because I just suck at aiming. However, with scope, well... Watch this frickin' shot. Yeah, five seconds is pretty fast, actually. Up next was the use of the Tri-Stringer Bow, which at first I just didn't know how to use, and even still using it, I don't really like it. It's Unlike the Splatter Shot, which is continuous damage, or the Crash Blasters and stuff like that, or the Mini Gun, it's not continuous fire, it's not high power, it's just kind of like one of those shotgun weapons like the Umbrellas. But, unlike the Umbrellas, this thing has a lot of power to miss, seriously. I, I, I really hated this weapon. I don't get it. It's nice looking, but I just can't use it for the life of me. Regardless, next level. Next level ended up being the MOA head, which, if the lockers have told me anything... Moa. Yeah... You know what, I, I think there is sometimes we have too much MOA. Regardless, this level was so peaceful, I just love the music, like, seriously, listen to this thing. Yeah, my bad. I really should have made the music a lot more clear. Uh, beside the point, let's continue on before the video ends. Up next was this, uh, one. Now, I don't remember the name of this level, but it was really fun because I got to use the next ultimate they added, which was the, I want to say, whip ability, where you get to warp yourself across the map. And I just love the fact that you could, although I couldn't get here, I actually loved this, the fact you could whip yourself around and shoot someone without them noticing. Uh, it did kind of suck, though, that it was only really this level, and it wasn't... Uh, actually, I think this is the only level I had. Dang, they really missed a big opportunity with that. Up next, after doing a bit of exploring, getting some metal objects and whatnot, I came to my greatest nightmare, known as Dance Dance Hall Jump. Ah, oh, no, this thing gave me nightmares. Like, I could not stand doing this level. Uh, let me just show you all the fails at once. That was the most insufferable level. Trust me how good it felt when I finally beat that. Good thing they're not adding that back to Splatoon 3's DLC if it ever comes out. Now, after playing most of the levels, I kind of skipped over a lot. It's because I don't really want to go into detail and spend all my time on Splatoon uh, the first world since nothing of value really was here. I really want to focus more on the stages for World 2 and stuff, but for now, let's just get to this part that I found to be interesting. Sweetie. 
congratulations, Nintendo. You made a more disappointing intro than the Squid Sisters' little hand dancing. Seriously. What what kind of intro? Who says they're not... <sighs> what? Okay, so besides getting to the fact that their intro is really bad, this is obviously Shiver Fry Big Man, because it's so dang obvious. Like, we saw them. And apparently they have to introduce themselves, even though they could easily, we can easily tell that they're the guys on TV. But, like, what? Why? <sighs> Come on, Deep Cut. You could have literally waited till the DLC, like, you know, off the hook did. Now, I'm going to end the video here, since I don't want to go any spoilers for any of the chapters above, since my stream was every single chapter, including the final boss fight. But, until my video comes out, I really hope you guys enjoyed, and I really do want people to buy Splatoon 2. Or, I should say 3. Why did I say 2? Anyways, regardless, Splatoon 3 is such a great game, and it adds a lot more mechanics to make you feel like it's more chaotic as the theme goes. However, I do wish there was a jukebox to play the music a bit better, so I don't have to keep searching through YouTube and finding the real song or remixes. But regardless, Splatoon 3 is a great game for its era, not to mention it finishes off the trilogy really well. So I hope you enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe maybe even, until the third video comes out, then you can just do whatever. Until then, see you later.